Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the English of the methods section. So what do you need to know to be able to write it in a style that sounds like a science paper? Uh, just to review from the last video, the methods section is the second part of your paper and it explains how you did your experiment, how you collected your data, and how you analyzed it. It has four main parts. The object of the study you explain first, then you explain the treatment for the object, then the procedure to collect the data, and then the procedure to analyze the data. Now here are a few points about the English of the method section. First, it should be detailed and specific. Include all the details about your experimental conditions and exact values. Don't use words like about. Second, the method section uses past tense. Almost everything will be in past tense. We'll show you that in a few minutes here. Uh, next, Generally, in science style, we avoid talking about ourselves, the researchers. That is, we avoid using I or we. This makes you sound more scientific and objective. And then fourth, the method section tends to use a lot of passive sentences. But it uses both passive and active, but it tends to use a lot of passive. This makes the, uh, this makes the paragraph flow better, and it helps to avoid using I or we by doing this. Okay, also, the method section explains the reasons for the choices you made in your experiment. Okay, just a quick example to talk about active and passive. This is a recipe for scones, and uh, the reason I'm showing you this is because uh, a lot of students make the mistake of making their method sound like a recipe, but the method is not a recipe for your experiment. In the recipe, we have a list of ingredients, and we have directions like like the first one it says preheat oven to 400 degrees okay uh, this kind of grammar is not used in the method section so for example um, the recipe style would take the sentence it uses a kind of command style and it would say preheat the oven to 400 degrees so it starts with a verb at the beginning like sit down more of an academic style you could change that to a full sentence with past tense instead of saying preheat the oven you could say we preheated the oven to 400 degrees okay now it's using past tense preheated and then the third example here you can avoid using we by changing it to a passive sentence instead of preheated you say was preheated the oven was preheated to 400 degrees okay i'll show you some more examples of this as we go into uh, the, research, the actual research paper later on. Now, uh, in this video, we're going to go back to the Apple paper that we used in the last video, and this time we're going to look at the language of it. Okay, so here's the Apple paper from the last video, and here's the method section, and let's just take a look at this. So, uh, first of all, we talk about the apples, Liberty Ab Apple Cultivar, and here's the, it is, was chosen for this study. So this is an example. It's past tense and it's passive. If we didn't use passive, then we'd have to say, we chose Liberty Apple Cultivar for this study. But that makes the subject of the sentence, we, instead of Liberty Apple Cultivar. And as much as possible, it's better to avoid saying we. Sometimes we do it. You know, you don't have to avoid it 100%. But... Um, when you're first starting to write a research paper, students have a tendency to say, we did this, we did this, we did this. And if you look at this paper, it's not done. There's hardly, there's no we in this paper, in fact. Next sentence, the apples were harvested. The moisture content of the apples was. Also, um, reasons are explained here. Liberty Apple Cultivar was chosen for this study because it is highly prone to browning. All right, let's look at the next section, five major groups of... Uh, chemical compounds tested were uh, oh here were certified uh, concentration of each dipping solution started at one percent and then decreased to lower concentrations so everything is past tense and that makes sense because the study I mean the experiment is finished okay let's look at this one selected apples of uniform size and color Okay, were washed by hand and sliced longitudinally. Tan apple slices were treated. So there is another past passive. Okay, the excess liquid was removed. Samples were kept on the laboratory bench. Now the reason this is a good thing to do 
is because it keeps the subject selected apples, okay, 10 apple slices, the excess liquid samples. Everything in here, the subject is always the samples or the apples, things like that. If you didn't use passive, then you'd have to say, we watched selected apples of uniform size by hand, and we sliced them longitudinally. We treated them, and then the subject would be we, 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 which takes the focus off of your research and more onto you. Sounds more like a blog post or a story instead of a research paper. Okay, and then finally the changes in the flesh color were measured. So almost everything in this paper was expressed, results were expressed as a mean value. Almost everything is in, uh, was carried out, is in passive, past and passive. Okay, one other thing I want to note is uh, this here. Table 1. Five major groups of chemical compounds tested. Table 1. And then here's Table 1. You can see up here at the top is the title of the table. Table 1. Five major chemical groups tested for anti-browning activity. And then we can look at this table and we can see all the chemicals that they used. So this is another thing you can do in your method is use a table or a figure, a diagram, or a picture, something like that, to help make your method more clear, especially if it's difficult to explain in sentences. Okay, now let's take a look at some uh, bad examples. This is a, uh, uh, I took one of the paragraphs from the Apple paper and I rewrote it in kind of a recipe style. So here I listed the ingredients, okay? Ingredients, apples, slicer, 36 different chemical compounds, bowls, pieces of cheesecloth. This is terrible. And then notice here I use the recipe style to write it. This is also terrible. First, wash the apples and slice them into 10 equal pieces. Then, dip them into 500 milliliters of solution for 3 minutes and drain them. Remove any excess liquid with cheesecloth. Then, let them sit at room temperature for 3 hours. This is terrible. This is a recipe style. So don't use this. Don't use the command style when you write your paper. Now this one is also a bad example. This is a what I call a story style. This uses a lot of we. First, we prepared some apples, several solutions of different chemicals, a bowl, a slicer, and some cheesecloth. Next, we washed the apples and cut them into 10 equal pieces using a slicer. Then, we treated the apple slices with 500 milliliters of dipping solution for three minutes. After that, we drained them and dried them with cheesecloth, and so on. So this sounds more like a story. It doesn't sound like a research paper. Finally, here's the good example. This is the actual paragraph from the research paper again. Using passive, selected apples of uniform size and color were washed by hand and sliced longitudinally into 10 equal pieces using a stainless steel hand slicer, and so on. So you can see that in this example, passive is used so that we don't have to say we, and we don't connect the sentences with first and then and then. It's not a story. You're just explaining the important points about how the apples were prepared so that uh, if someone else gets a different result, they might say, oh, well, in my research, we dipped for 10 minutes and th these people only dipped it for three minutes. Maybe that's why my results are different. Okay, so just to review, the method section tends to be detailed and specific, uses past tense, avoid talking about the researchers, avoid using I or we, uses passive and active to make it flow better and to avoid I and we, and explain the reasons for what you did. Also, you might have a table or a figure to help make the method more easy to understand. But if you do, make sure to have a caption and to refer to the table or figure in the paragraph like this with the figure one. Okay, right here, figure one. Let me just show you one more time here. Here's the table. And there's the caption, or the title, table one and the title. And then in the sentence, they refer to it with parentheses, table one. Okay, and then finally, I'll just leave you with a few more points about general academic writing advice. The first one, probably the most important one, leave time to reread your writing and improve it. The first time you write something, even if you're a native speaker, the first time you write something, it's not going to be good. You have to write it and then leave it, maybe leave it for one day at minimum, and then read it again the next day. That means if you want your paper to be good, you can't wait till the night before to write it. 
you got to write it at least the day before the day before. Then you can wait the next day and then read it again and you'll find a lot of mistakes. I'm telling you, this is the number one most important thing you can do to improve your writing. Second, be clear and complete. Third, don't make the reader back up. Okay, that's kind of connected to the last one. Be clear and complete. Don't make the reader back up. So when people are reading, make sure I don't have to go back to the last paragraph to figure out what you're talking about. And then lastly, format your paper so it looks nice. I've made a bunch of uh, videos about how to use Word to format your paper um, easily so that it looks pretty and uh, makes reading it a lot easier.